Tuning into Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. This is Don O'Malley. Today we're showing the Spider's Web, chapters 6 through 11. And I made a mistake, it's probably 6 through 10, because my cameraman's looking at me with eyes, brows raised. So, ignore what I said, just watch the show. Uh, we're showing the Spider's Web again. Now, even today, they're, the spider proof so popular, they still publish novels about them today. This is one of them The Spider and the Legion of Doom. If you pick this up, you'll find that on the acknowledgement page, you'll find my name underneath that. I was lucky enough to be one of the proofreaders on this, and I enjoyed that a lot. I was thanked by the writer, Will Murray, about the novel. Uh, he thanked me on that page, and then on page 105, he killed me off. Actually, I snuck my name in and he left it in there as one of the dead cops. So here we go with the next chapters of The Spider's Web. Thanks for tuning in again. This is Don O'Malley. the criminal reaches out of the underworld in an effort to strangle major industry and seize control of the nerve centers of the country. The identity of the octopus is unknown even to his own men, but the fear and terror in which he is held is widespread. Operating with cold-blooded precision, the octopus has raided one industry after another, gaining a foothold through methods of terrorization. In this manner, he has gained a position that threatens the peace and security of the business world. In combating this menace, Commissioner Keck and the police department are aided by Richard Wentworth, famous criminologist in the battle against crime. The police do not know that Wentworth is also the spider, a sinister masked figure that is hunted both by the police and criminals. Forced to work outside the law in his support of justice, the spider's activities have frequently been misunderstood, with the result that the police and criminals alike are seeking to destroy him. Unable to defend himself without revealing his true identity, the spider hated and feared by the underworld is placed between two fires. In an effort to draw out the men of the octopus, Wentworth consented to take part in a benefit performance given for the widows and children of the bus drivers killed by the master criminal. As Wentworth appeared on the stage, a prearranged plan to kill him got underway. Let me explain Nita, it. where's Wentworth? Is he badly hurt? I have an ambulance on the way out. The dick wasn't hurt, Mr. Not Trick. Not hurt, but I saw him shot. Mr. Trick. A trick. A trick. What you saw was a vision of Dick thrown by the projector. In the meantime, Dick was out front trying to get a line on the men who wanted to kill him. Yes, but my oh, own. Yes. But I don't understand. Will you tell me more? All right. I suppose so, but where's Wentworth? I don't know. Do you know where he is? All I know is he told us to stay here. Perhaps he's in his dressing room. Well, let's find out. None of my men have seen him. Dick! Who did this, Wentworth? 
I don't even know what hit me. I was hit from behind just outside that door. Better get a doctor. No, I'm all right. Did you get the hoodlums? Well, we got a few little small fry. They bolted for the door when the spider started shooting. Let's get out of here. There might be some of them still about. Will you give my people a police escort home? You bet I will. It worked. It worked. Now, boys, take care of Nita. Did you get my wife? Yeah, he fell like an ox. When the spider was there, and I dope some of the boys. Look! I'll take care of this. Get back, folks. Give him air. Somebody get an ambulance. No, I don't want to go to the hospital. Think it'd be all right? Sure. Where do you live? Just down the street a ways. I can make it all right. I'll help you. I'm very grateful for your interest in my brother. Are you a police officer, Mr... Uh... Not exactly. My name is Wentworth. Wentworth? Sis! This is the man that's helping find the octopus. Yes. Yes, of course. We, uh, we've heard lots about you, Mr. Wentworth. Well, uh, good, I hope. Johnny, I'll have my doctor look you over in the morning. You'll be all right, I'm sure. You were tricked into firing, not at Wentworth, but as his image projected on a screen. A campaign is never accomplished in one battle. A wise general always makes allowances for small reverses so that his great victory is more certain. And I am declaring a dividend that I know will stimulate your efforts. The Bank of Commerce will transfer a quarter of a million dollars to its Oak Street branch. I will have the exact information of the time and method of this transfer. Each of you men will receive a sizable bonus. You will receive your orders. They tell me they all got away. Yes, stopping for you to pick up the boy gave them too much of a start. Any results from fingerprinting the ticket stubs? Only one lead that looks promising. Hmm, Tim Spencer. Now our job is to get Mr. Walters, alias Tim Spencer, to give us a lead to his boss without warning him. Quite a job, I'd say. Not so tough. I shall enlist the services of my very good friend, Flicky McQuay. No, that ain't no tip. Just a drunk with a nice tip. Hello, Flicky. Hello, Tim. Play this one for me. Dirty Louisville. I didn't know you played the police. That's a hot one. You better hop on it yourself. Be in a hurry. Have Ram Singh take Tim down to headquarters. Ask Kirk to hold him incommunicado. You come back here and stay. Here's the number Tim was calling. Somebody named Kate. Kate. Wire chief, please. Hello, Bert. Wentworth speaking. Say, give me the address on this number, will you? DR 04414. DR 04414. Bank of Commerce, eh? Uh, very interesting. Thanks, Bert. Bank of Commerce? Yes, this is number 13. Not yet, sir. He expects to call at any moment now. Fancy, this shouldn't be bad here. Hello, Mr. Wentworth. I'm all right again. That's uh, fine. I'm glad to hear it. Hey, 
get your sports edition paper here. Bank of Commerce. Yes, I'll put you on Mr. Gray's private wire. Yes, speaking. Good. I was getting nervous about that currency transfer. In a laundry truck. Good idea. Oh, Myrtle. Yes? Myrtle, will you take the board for a few minutes? I have a little errand to do. I just thought about it. Thank you. Here she comes around the corner. Black hat, black dress, light gloves. I beg your pardon. I'm a stranger here. I wonder if you could take... It's the pinch, Miss Sands. Get in the car and keep quiet. We know that you are employed by the octopus. We also know that you were placed in that bank to get information for him. Now, if you don't talk, I'll turn you over to the police. No, don't do that. I can't tell you. I don't dare. They'd kill me. I'll... Is it a trick? No, Dick. She's really fainted. The poor thing's frightened to death. I'll give her a rest. Nita, I've got a job for you. Do you remember your old telephone work? I could take over switchboard right now. Fine. Is Miss Simpson ill? Oh, no, just a little family trouble, I believe. Now, if you'll just tell me about the different officers and officials, I'll... Yes, there it is. Thank you. Now, this line here is the private office for Mr. Gordy. Brackton, are you men ready? Ready, sir. They leave Malene's garage the moment they get the word. Go to Malene's at once. The money will arrive at the bank at exactly 2 o'clock. Be in a car camouflaged as a laundry truck. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Number 10? Yes, sir. Number 13 must have expected trouble or she would have phoned instead of sending this note. She was mighty cagey when she slipped it to me, sir. You go to the bank at once. Find out if anyone is spying and take what steps are necessary. Yes, sir. And you were not aware that there was a leak of information from your bank? Positively not, Wendell. All right. The girl now on the board is one of my operators. I only hope we got her here in time to find out what's going on. Thank you, Commerce. Just a moment, I'll see if he's in. Yes? Thank you, Commerce. Just a moment, please. Evidently, he was sent here with a message for the other operator. And he found we had placed a substitute. Here it comes. Attention all cars, this may be in your district, a robbery, Bank of Commerce money car, laundry truck just past 81st and Center. A number of innocent people were killed today. Your own brother was knocked down by one of the bandits. Johnny? Hmm. Did the man see him? We don't know that, but if he did, Johnny's life is in danger while those men are still at liberty. Johnny, my poor brother. Biff! What are you doing here? Johnny! Oh! All right, I'll talk. Four years ago, I was mixed up with Tim Spencer in a wiretapping job. I didn't know. Spencer was arrested and I barely escaped. The police are still looking for the girl that was with him. I got a job in the bank under the name of Georgia Simpson. Spencer discovered me there, threatened me, made me get information for the octopus. Who is the octopus? I don't know. Honest, I don't. But you telephoned him? No. No, he called me at the bank and gave orders. My reports were always sent through Spencer. 
But you mustn't say anything. I wouldn't be safe. Johnny wouldn't see. You don't have to worry anymore, Miss Sands. The last link between you and the octopus is gone. Tim Spencer is dead. Your secret is safe with us. That's swell, Mr. Wentworth. I wanted to tell you I remember that man now. The one who knocked me down at the bank? He's Moline. He works at the Oak Street Garage. Good boy, Johnny. Now you and your sister run along. Go on. Nita. Ramsing. Jackson. They've got a break at last. Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. Okay. Coming out. Do we rush him? Not unless they discover us. If they do, that'll be work for the spider. Come on. Nothing, fellas. Take it easy. We don't want any speed cop after us. Just load on board. episode you will see Richard Wentworth as the spider on whip the octopus killers only to run into the police. The octopus, ruthless and cruel, destroys his own men when they fail to carry out his orders. Killers hired by the octopus wait for Wentworth to walk into a trap. Will he escape? known as the octopus and baited the city, spreading chaos and death and gaining control of all industry. Unable to track down this fiendish destroyer of life and property, Police Commissioner Kirk enlisted the aid of his friend Richard Wentworth, noted criminologist. Disguised as the spider, wanted by the law and a terror to the underworld, Wentworth battles the octopus relentlessly.
in his life against tremendous odds, the spider succeeded in uncovering a plot by the octopus to steal a huge sum of money that is being transported to a bank. As his own car, driven by his faithful man Jackson, comes to breath from the fleeing car of the thieves, the spider daringly leaps from his running board into the open car of the bandit. The speeding car was hashed into a large electric transformer charged with thousands of volts of death dealing electricity. I'm going down to Malene's garage. I'll take you home, and I want you to stay in your apartment until you hear from me. Okay, by me, if you say so. Jackson. Yes, sir? Get the car, please. We're going to take Johnny home. Ramsing will go with us. Yes, sir. Now, remember, Johnny, you stay in your apartment until you hear from me. I'll send your bicycle to you. Thanks, Mr. Wentworth. Goodbye. in the open, Master. Does it not work for the police? Lawyer, when immediate action is necessary, the police are too handicapped by rules and regulations. Therefore, the spider must strike at once. Wait here. Why 
Spider, he's after me. Where are you going, buddy? The spider's upstairs. I saw him. Pull yourself together, buddy. He don't want you. I tell you, he's up there. Let me help before he comes down. I saw him on the fire escape. Jackson, you stay in the car. Ramsey, come with me. What a break this is. Hey, who do you think's coming down the alley? Wentworth and one of his men. Well, right in our laps. Back in the office while you're working. Now, hey, boys, get some work clothes on and look around the car. Get behind the car so you can't be seen. I beg your pardon, old man. I'm looking for a mechanic. My car... Oh, wait. wait. This is a pleasure. I'd keep my hands still if I were you and a couple of guns pointing right at you. All right. You talk. I'll listen. Now you're being smart. Hey, you keep your hands still. You might get itchy fingers. You know, the octopus is going to enjoy seeing you two guys. Feelings will be mutual. Sure. All right, in the car. Just a minute. Come in. I'll take this. Come on. All right, Joe, come on along with me. Hold it, Steve! You're going fast. Tell me, who's the octopus? I don't know. What's his next move? Don't know. He's got maps. Burglar lines. For banks. What bank? Where? I don't know. Tonight. Midnight. So, Watchworth came in on you unexpectedly. Why? Weren't you warned? No, sir. Your orders were not to let one foot out of your sight. Tonight, the police will be drawn to the east side of town. You'll be able to carry out my plans in the 43rd district unmolested. You have complete details, and the time is midnight sharp. You may go. Oi! I didn't mean to let Wentworth get away. But he's slippery. And I lost him. I'm loyal. I follow orders. I was gonna phone Steve. But... You don't believe me. You don't care what I say. All right. But I don't want what Merkel got. mentioned banks and midnight. He also said something about the octopus having maps and burglar alarms. Now that must mean maps of burglar alarm wiring systems. So Moline must have supplied the maps to the octopus. Mm. And Moline was attached to the 43rd district. Master, is that not the place to look for the hand of the octopus? That's what you and I are going to do. There are a number of banks, bond houses, and financial firms located in that district. Now we can't be too confident. Jackson, you cruise the east side and keep your eyes open for anything unusual. Nita, you cover the south end. Now, phone your reports into Jenkins. I'll be in touch with him myself.
calling all cars. Attention all cars. This may be in your district. All precincts, emergency call. All precincts, concentrate. Every available man on the east side, south of River Street. Explosions and water mains broken. Hello, Jenkins. Oh, Major, I was waiting for your call. Jackson reported. The curious thing is that Nita telephoned after Jackson. She says they're creating a flood in the southeast side, too. Thanks, Jenkins. It's beginning to wear it up now. That's the old army game, Ram Singh. Remember that smoke screen they threw up around Johnny's place while they were trying to take him today? Looks like the same technique here. A lot of racket and nothing going on where the racket is. Maybe we're right after all. Let's take a look around to make sure. Well, I think I'd better check the burger on cable. I can get to the conduit through that manhole. Just as I thought. It's cut. I'll splice it. Work fast, boys. Never mind the alarm. It's been taken care of. Good as new. Episode, you will see the octopus reach into a secret meeting in an attempt to eliminate Richard Wentworth. Removing all obstacles in his path, the octopus tries to destroy Police Commissioner Kirk and Nita Van Sloan, fiancé of Wentworth. The spider caught in a trap is doomed to death by the paid killers of the octopus. Will he escape?
bring us the world's power known as the Oxford is trying to gain control of industry and commerce by a campaign of sterilization and destruction. Richard Wentworth, famous criminologist, disguised as the spider, is aiding the police in their efforts to track down and destroy this menace. regular alarms, the spider discovered a bank about to be robbed. Single-handed, he faced a desperate gang which had been ordered to kill him on sight. He was struck down by criminals who fled as the police came speeding through the sea. The unconscious spider lies helpless in the path of huge motor-driven gates charged with jet-stealing electricity. knows our plans. Places that we guard are left alone, while he strikes at others. He's undoubtedly got a large and efficient organization. He's a serious menace to the commercial life of the city. But we know all that. What's on your mind? He's getting his information from someone close to us. That couldn't happen. But it is happening. Now, I suggest that we call a meeting of the heads of the organizations that are being threatened. I'll let slip some information. False, of course. And we'll see what happens. If the information does get out, what then? Then we can concentrate on a few men instead of trying to cover the whole city. All right. I'll get them together tonight. We'll have dinner in a private room at my club. Most of them belong there and... And I will arrange a tip for Mr. Octopus. Private business is being hurt in more ways than one. And it therefore becomes necessary for private concerns to take measures to protect themselves. Now, you're all in the same boat. Every move of the octopus affects each of you, either directly or indirectly. I'm going to tell you something in strict confidence. The Air Transport Company has been working secretly on a new scientific device, a very costly one, one that will vitally help combat this octopus situation. I want you all to see it, for you will benefit by it. As soon as we finish here, we will go out to the airport for a demonstration of this device. It is being kept under guard in Building C. Airport, like you said they would. Thanks. Goodbye. In spite of all our precautions, the information leaked out. The airport was just attacked. But the attack failed because it was expected. The enemy is repulsed for the moment. 
but only for the moment. What is that, huh? Anyone hurt? What is that? You haven't moved, you'd have been killed. No, no, Kirk. That shot came from outside the room. Whoever did it is gone. Gentlemen, in view of what has happened tonight, I think we'll have to postpone our trip to the airport. Thank you for your time and your spirit of cooperation. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. men is in league with the Octus. I'm going to have each one of them shadowed day and night. Hmm. I'm hoping that the guilty man will realize that he made a bad break tonight. Perhaps this will force the octopus into a careless or desperate move that will betray him. Let's hope so. Let's call it a night. Stop by my house on the way down to headquarters in the morning. Right. Today we'll get information about us. So we ourselves will furnish him with some. I want for to get around that Steve has broken with me. You find me. It was my thought the spider will try to use Steve against me. I don't like it, sir. Your likes or dislikes do not enter into it. You will obey orders. You get busy. Talk loud and talk often. Only those in this room will know it's false. Got a lot on the ball, even if he don't look it. <laughs> they sprung me on bail. I gotta get enough sugar now to get the rat squashed. That'll be easy, and we won't have to worry about cops much longer. No? No. Say, you heard about Steve? Steve who? Steve Harmon. He's broken with the octopus. No. Yeah. Saber here got it direct from Steve himself. He must be tired of living. Where is he now, hiding? Huh, that's the funny part of it. If he had any sense, he would be. But he's setting up drinks in his hangout over at Brogan's. <laughs> Sounds like a farewell party to me. This is the spider speaking. Yeah? If you are broken with the octopus, it might be to our advantage to get together. I've uh, broken with the octopus, all right, but I'm not exactly crazy about you either. I know I'm in a tough spot. I know I need help. All right, I'll get together with you, but I'm taking no chances. Neither am I. No, I won't come to you. We'll meet where we both get an even break. All right, have it your own way. I know I'm liable to be gunned if I go out, but I'll have to risk it. Will it be? West Drive of the Park tonight at Nine Bells. I'll be there. <laughs> well, boys? The spider finally fell for it. Tonight we get him. I don't like the looks of this, sir. Neither do I. But if it's a straight tip and I muff it, I'll never forgive myself. The great spider. I'm glad you came because there's something important I want to say to you. That was very interesting, Harmon. Drop that gun. Tell your men not to move. shadowing our suspects, I thought Nita might try to establish social contacts with them. That is, if it's all right with you. Well, I'd love to help. It's all right with me. But take good care of her, Kirk. Well, I'd better if I know what's good for me. Well, we 
get to Gray's house, you mix with the guests and see what information you can get. Right. Now, I'm supposed to find out who his intimate friends are and how much time he spends away from home. There's a car training us, Commissioner. Speed up. Shaken, the faster we are, and there isn't a turn off for miles. Make a quick stop around the next curve. Nita, you make a getaway. I'll lead them on. But, Commissioner. You I... must. I promise Wentworth I'd take care of you. I don't believe these rumors. I think that they're a bold stroke on the part of the octopus. I didn't think he'd dare take Kirk and Nita's with him. The police department demoralized, the public helpless before the growing power of the octopus. The octopus. Who is he? Where are his headquarters? He's a clever man, but if I could get my hands on someone close to him, get him to talk, get some information that would give me a lead. Yes, but who? Steve Harmon. The octopus sent Steve after the spider. Steve must be very close to the octopus, if he isn't the octopus himself. Jackson, I want you to get a message to Steve at his hideout. Now get to him without being seen. With Commissioner Kirk out of the running, a wave of hysteria is engulfing the entire city. No one can successfully oppose us now. Steve Harmon. The spider knew the setup last night was a trap. He says he'll give me another chance to get him out in the open. I'm to ride the northbound bus. He'll meet me between 8.30 and 9 o'clock near the park. He must think I'm crazy to bunk up against him again. No, you're not crazy. And you are going to meet him again. You mean I'm to let the spider get me? No. You'll be well caught on that bus. Not to save your own worthless life, but to get the spider. episode you will see, Richard Wentworth as Blinky McQuaid attempting to gain information from the underworld is taken by the police. The octopus strikes by taking Jackson, Wentworth's chauffeur, a prisoner. Richard Wentworth as the spider plunges into a trap attempting to capture the octopus. Will he escape?
the most vicious of criminals, known only as the octopus, rules the underworld and is trying to gain control of all industry. Richard Wentworth, famous criminologist, and the spider, a character created by Wentworth, are helping the police in a desperate war against this madman. combat on top of a passenger bus. Finding himself surrounded by a swarm of underworld crooks, the spider was forced to shoot his way out. Making his getaway in a car, he was trapped by the traffic on the side roads and forced straight ahead, plunging his car off a pit of certain death in the currents below. Are you all right, Master? Yes. Let's get out of here. I was pretty much worried about you on that bus. Yeah. Look for a while until we get Steve Harmon alive. Help me home, Jackson. He was a good night's rest. I'm worried. No word from Nita. There must be some trouble, Major. We would have heard from her. I'll call Cook's office. Maybe we'll get some news there. They're bringing in every man with a record and spreading a dragnet all over the town. We must get a line on Commissioner Clerk. Police Department. Hello, Richard Wentworth speaking. Any word from Commissioner Kirk? What? Oh, thanks. By the profit, where can we start? It's like the proverbial needle in the haystack. News travels fast on the underworld grapevine. Lincoln McQuaid must get us a lead. <laughs> How you doing, Blinky? I'm murdered him. Oh. Look at that. Did I think that's me? Oh, boy. Please locking was okay. Yeah. So long, Martin. I'll see you later. So long. So long. Did you pick up any news, Major? Plenty. The octopus is holding Kirk, trying to disrupt the police department. Phone me to the department. Hello? Yeah. Oh, Nita. Yeah. Where are you? Yes. Two miles down the road from the gas station. All right. We'll be down there as quickly as possible. Goodbye. Boys, we've got to move fast. Nita knows where Kirk's being held. Jackson, get the car while I get out of this makeup. Are you all right, dear? Yes, I'm all right, Dick. Don't worry about me. Where's the place? Turn right at the next corner. <laughs> Dick! 
There's the house. Place is as open as that. They don't expect to raid. Well, we've got to get a set up of the house. Jackson, we're going back to the road. I have a plan. Nita, you stay here with Ram Singh. Here comes the car now. Get out there and flag him down. your car. It won't be harmed. The spider! Get out of the car and don't ask questions. Jackson, drain the radiator. Ram, take care of this man. See that he's kept out of danger. Radiator train. Race the motor. All right, Jackson. Go to the house and get water. Look the place over and hurry back. What do you want, buddy? Can you help me, neighbor? I need some water. Uh, yeah, wait here.
home. Get it? Okay, Major. Where's the other trap door? Well, in the next room. Good. I'm going to try to draw them in here. I want to keep the other passage clear. Have you seen Kirk? No, but there's another room right next door. All right. Now you stay here and make them think you're still tied up. Worked like a charm. The cops arrived just in time. Good boy, Jackson. Let's get back to town. We couldn't help it, sir. We had the spider trapped. Enough of your excuses. Wentworth's man probably knows all about our super-ring unknown. He did see the men working on the gun. Oh, I thought so. Trail him. Tap his ball. Find out where he's going. But get him before he gets to the authorities with this information. Yes, sir. Our work's just begun. From what Jackson tells me and what I've seen myself, the octopus is building some sort of a ray gun. Hello. Oh, hello, Kirk. What happened to you? The spider? What, again? Yes, yes, leader's all right. Say, where is that place, anyhow? On Claiborne Highway, near Evans Road. He's giving Wentworth the location of the house. I'm going down to the realty board and check on that property. It might give us a lead to the octopus. Jackson will drive me down. I'll call you later. Goodbye. Real exchange right away. Come over with us. Episode you will see, Nita Van Sloan, fiancé of Richard Wentworth, escaped the trap of the octopus. The octopus, cruel and ruthless, crashes a plane carrying innocent people. The spider trailing the octopus killers runs into a hand-to-hand -hand fight on the rooftop. Will he escape?
threatening to chill into the city a new criminal menace known as the octopus is sweeping away the foundations of law and order in an attempt to gain control of all industry. Richard Wentworth, famous criminologist, and the spider, a character created by Wentworth, have allied themselves with the police department to help fight this vicious menace. Hello. Oh, hello, Kurt. What happened to you? The spider? What, again? Yes, yes, Lita's all right. Hey, where is that place, anyhow? On Fairborn Highway, near Evans Road. He's giving Whitworth the location of the house. I'm going down to the realty board and check on that property. It might give us a lead to the occupant. Jackson will drive me down. I'll call you later. Goodbye. Real exchange right away. Come on, let's go. found himself at the mercy of the scheming lieutenants of the octopus, who cut the cable of an elevator in which Wentworth was riding, causing the elevator to start a plunge to search and destruction. Boy, that was a close one. Yeah, the yeah. cable must have snapped. Yeah, it's a good thing these elevators have a safety check device on them. And the car fell because the cable was cut. The inspectors don't take chances with faulty mechanisms. Well, how are we going to get out of here now? They'll lower us down in a minute. We didn't know the elevators had safety devices on them. Take a detail of Mary Chief Master Wentford. Sahib. Boys, we have company. Keep talking. Kirk, please. What was speaking? Hello, Kirk. The octopus is on the loose again. Yes, three of his men just attacked me. No, oh, no, I'm all right. But send the coroner up here, will you? I'll tell you all about it later. If you want to reach me, I'll be at Blake's office at the Air Transport Company. to be having your share of trouble these days, don't you? Trouble, and then some. The public's blaming those plane crashes on our neglect. And it's not neglect. Those planes are perfect when they leave the airport.
Hello. Hello. Operator 81. Everything's okay. I'll stand by for orders. With my super ray gun, every airplane firm will soon be under my thumb. Yes, sir. must have something to do with those crashes. And yet, what are they? Who was the last one to receive reports from the planes before they crash? The radio operator. Let's look in on him. Amy's plane in trouble now. through there. The captain on the line someplace. Brady, take this man to Commissioner Kirk. Tell him I want him held. Yes? Yes, operator. Oh, it was from a phone booth, eh? Oh. What's that? Richard Wentworth? Yes, he's right here. To you. Hello. Uh, Nita's at 96 12th Street. Just a minute. Yes? All right, Jenkins. Thanks. I'm on my way. We gotta make sure where we want that plane to crash. Here it is here. The 
Rayton will be placed about there, which means that the plane will fall about 10 miles beyond Riverdale. All right. You take the trailer with the ray gun and be careful. Make sure nobody follows you to the hideout. I've got to check up on the Vance Lone girl. being shot down by a ray gun. I suspected as much when I heard the pilot broadcasting as he was hit. They got the gun in some kind of a trailer and they're planning to crash the four o'clock mail plane near Riverdale. Mrs. Wentworth, keep that mail plane on the ground. It's going to be attacked. No, 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 we can't stop it. No one left a minute ago. Is it going? Yes, it's already on its way. There's only one way of saving it. We've got to get to my plane at once. Get my plane ready. Yes, sir. I'm going to try to signal the mail pallet down. The super ray gun. I've got to take that chance. Please be careful, Dick. All right, thing, let her go. In the next episode, you will see Richard Wentworth locates the death dealing ray gun of the octopus and destroys it. Innocent industry leaders destroyed ruthlessly by the octopus. 
The spider trapped on a fire escape faces death below. Will he escape? sidekick Sam Ketchum fight on the side of law and order, one of the most fabulous characters from the Tracy comic strip makes his first appearance on television. It is none other than Tracy's old friend, Theo Plenty, who, with his ever-loving wife, Gravel Gertie, becomes involved in a series of misadventures which almost cost him his life. More about this. And now, Dick Tracy and B.O. Plenty's folly. Morning, Sam. Morning. Get that ballistic support yet? Yeah, it's right there on your desk. Good. Oh, and the bullets match, too. I thought they would. Well, now we have the proof conclusive. All we have to do is get a confession and we're done. Any calls while I was out? No, just routine stuff. Oh, yeah. Your old pal B.O. Plenty called. Oh, in a tizzy, as usual. Good old B.O. Every time he stubs his toe, he calls on me. What did he want this time? Oh, the fix on a traffic citation. Gravel Gertie got tagged for jaywalking. Oh, jaywalking? Oh, no. Well, it serves her right. The next time he calls, the answer is no. You know, those two people can get into more trouble accidentally than any... I'm Dr. Brush from the Museum of Fine Arts. I have an appointment with Mr. Tracy. Oh, yes. Would you come in? Thank you. I'm Dick Tracy, Dr. Brush. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. I understand you have a rather serious problem. Yes, I do, Mr. Tracy. To begin with, I suppose you're aware that several very valuable paintings have mysteriously disappeared from various museums in the last few years. And have usually been replaced by extremely good reproductions, if I understand it correctly. Exactly. We discovered the most recent theft just this morning. The famous Ghouls at Play by Hans van Gogh. Ghouls at Play? But I recall that I saw that in your galleries just a week ago. The question is, did you see the original or the reproduction? The fact that I detected the substitution this morning doesn't necessarily mean it was stolen last night. Oh, I know. It could have happened yesterday or a year ago. That'll make it more difficult to find. Difficult or not, Mr. Tracy, that painting must be returned. I hope you understand. Of course. I'll do the best I can. In the meantime, if you have any information or clues that'll help us on this job, why... We have one suspicion. A very nebulous idea, almost completely without foundation. A man who calls himself Professor Art Pallet. Why do you suspect this man in particular? Only because he was involved in a similar scandal some 20 years ago. Well, that's a good starting point. Professor Art Pallet, huh? All right. We'll look into this right away, Doctor. You'll notify me the moment you learn anything, of course. You can count on it. Yes, oh, sir. by the way, yes. this painting, Ghouls at Play, isn't there a superstition about it bringing bad luck to its owner, like certain famous jewels? And deservedly so, I might add. Before it came into our possession, every person who owned that painting, without exception, met up with some form of tragedy. Usually violent death. Yes, I seem to recall something about it. See if you can get me an address on Professor Art Pallet. Well. 
if it isn't B.O. Oh, plenty back again. Be with you in a minute. Take your time. I ain't no hurry. There you are, my friend, all wrapped up nice and tidy like. Next time you need a quick buck, remember, Cassius King will always spring. Yeah, for a gallon of blood. Okay, B.O., what are you going to pawn this time? A very rare and valuable fur piece. Here. Where'd you steal it? Now, don't get me riled, Mr. King. That coat happens to be the private property of my ever-loving wife, Gravel Gertie. I don't know. It don't look like much. What? I'll have you know that's a genuine mink. Yeah? Well, for your information, that genuine mink spent its entire life in a rabbit hole. How much you want? Fifty dollars. I'll give you twenty. Twenty dollars for a magnificent garment like that? It's even got a silk lining. It had a silk lining. Twenty-two fifty. Make it twenty-five. Be all because you're an old pal, I'm gonna do you a favor. Twenty-two seventy-five, and that's the limit. Sign here. All right. But you're sure playing a dirty trick on Gertie. I was fixing to buy her something real nice for her birthday. You know, a surprise. Surprise, eh? Be all because I like you so much, I'm gonna help you solve your problem. Problem? Who's got a problem? Your problem. Gertie's birthday. Now look, how about this nice diamond ring? I'll let you have it real cheap. How cheap? Well, seeing as Jew, you can have it for exactly $22.75. You think you're pretty slick, don't you? But I ain't a listener. Besides, Gertie don't care for jewelry. It's too gaudy. She likes something with uh, culture in them, like uh, rare old first edition, maybe. Here you are. Just the thing. Only this ain't no cheap first edition. This is a third edition, three times as good. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'd better look around. OK. I wouldn't do this for anybody else, understand? But here's a bargain you can't afford to pass up. Now, look at that. Did you ever see anything more beautiful? What is it? What is it, the man asks. <laughs> Why, this is a rare treasure, a masterpiece. I know. But what is it? What does it mean? That's the wonderful thing about modern art. It means anything you want it to mean. You want a tree? It's a tree. You want a dog? It's a dog. Anything and everything. Just the ticket for Gertie. Do you really think she'd like it? Oh, she'll love it. And believe me when I tell you, it breaks my heart to see it go. But anything for a buddy. Maybe you're right. She gets a kick out of them highfalutin' arty gadgets. How much? Don't tell me. $22.75. Cheap at half the price. And believe me, B.O., Gertie's gonna love you for this. Yeah. Like I always say, there's just nothing too good for the little woman. This time, fingers, my lad, I have surpassed even myself. What do you think of it? Do I got to answer that question? Go ahead. Tell me exactly what you think. OK, Professor. You ask for it, it stinks. Precisely. What you behold is probably the most hideous and no talent painting ever perpetrated in the name of art. <laughs> now, just one last dab in exactly the wrong spot. And voila, another monster has been created. <laughs> Brutal, isn't it? Just unbelievably bad. You can say that again. Gee whiz, Professor, do you always have to paint stuff that turns your stomach? Stupid minds pose stupid questions. For your information, Fingers, I can paint as well, if not better, than almost any artist you can name. But I don't. Instead, I paint subterfuge. Pure subterfuge. So that's what you call it. Let me show you. Look. Look at those gruesome blotches hanging there. Can you imagine anyone short of an idiot buying daubs like that? I wouldn't be found dead with one of them. No one else would. And there you have my secret. Hidden beneath the loathsome surface of each painting in this room, you will find a priceless masterpiece, purloined from the great art galleries of the world. You don't say. 
On this easel, craftily disguised by my grotesque brushstrokes, stands a celebrated boy in blue by Ronaldo. No kidding. Here in hidden bliss hangs the magnificent shadow of nothing by Wilhelm von Ontobrecht, worth the king's ransom. Here we have. That must be the creep. Let him in. Let me have that. I've been waiting over a year for this moment. When I got this painting, it was the hottest thing in the country. I had to get rid of it. So I hid it away in the one place I was sure they would never look, a pawn shop. And it worked. Now, gentlemen, under this wrapping paper lies one of the greatest art treasures in the world. Only the favored few have been granted the boon of witnessing the unveiling of a painting valued at half a million dollars. Half a million smackers? And I was looking it around as though it was nothing. You idiot moron! You bumbling, bird-brained, imbecilic fool! What's your matter, huh? What'd I do, huh? What'd I do? What did you do? What did you do, you dim-witted goon? You brought back the wrong painting. After the plans I made, the, the trouble I went to, the money I spent, the blood that's been spilled. Creep, for two cents I'd tear you to bits. No, 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 wait a minute, Professor. I don't know one painting from another. I'm colorblind. How did I know the guy was making a switch? Uh, it's my fault. I should have known better. Employ a fool and you become the fool yourself. Maybe it's so bad as it looks, Professor. Maybe the guy in the hawk shop made a mistake. If he did, the painting still ought to be there, shouldn't it? I'll find out soon enough. And if it's not, I warn you, creep. Your life won't be worth a paper this thing was wrapped in. Half a million dollars worth of art. One of the greatest works ever executed, and I had it right in my hands. Well, I'll get it back. And heaven help any man who stands in my way. <laughs> Don't heave it, honey. Remember your blood pressure. Don't you honey me, you, you coat snatcher. Easy, Tootsie Pie. Easy does it. Is that any way to greet a dutiful spouse who comes home bearing a gift? You didn't think B.O. Plenty would forgive his little helpmate on her birthday, did you? Birthday? Oh, B.O., you shouldn't have done it. Come here, Daddy Dumpling. <laughs> Where did you get that horrible looking thing? Why, baby, I thought you'd like it. I said, where did you get it? Why, Cassius King, he said... I thought so. That's where you took my fur coat. You hocked it and let him con you into buying that thing. Sweetheart, where are you going? Back to the jip artist. I want my fur coat. And you better be here when I get back. Didn't take you long, Sam. Didn't take me long. Are you kidding? I've been tramping the streets for hours on this case. My feet are killing me. Get anything on Professor Pallet? Not a whale of a lot. An eccentric sort of character. Lives in the snazzy joint over on the east side. Apparently loaded with dough. Quite an art collector. Considers himself quite a painter. 
I know, I made it a point to see some of his stuff. Pretty bad. The worst from what I hear. But he apparently thinks it's great. He won't hang a thing in the house but his own junk. Doesn't that strike you as rather odd, Sam? Here's an obvious connoisseur. Surrounds himself with valuable art treasures, but turns his back on any painting he didn't do himself. Like I said, the guy's eccentric. Or very clever. I think we better have a talk with the eminent professor, Sam. <laughs> Bob, where is it? We'll be back with Dick Tracy and B.O. Plenty in a few moments. But first, and now, Dick Tracy and B.O. Plenty's Folly. Okay, where is it? Take your hands off me, you big ape. What's the idea? Where's what? The paint, the paint. Where'd you ditch that paint? Well, you don't want that thing, do you? My old lady took it. Don't give us that stuff. Where'd you hide that paint? I tell you, I ain't got it. Gertie took it. We better get him out of here, Fingers. The professor will know how to make him talk. Maybe you're right. Come on, you. Hey, hold on. Where are you taking me? Tracy, I want action. Now, Gertie, if you came here about that jaywalking ticket, I can't do anything about it, and I wouldn't if I could. Who said anything about that? I want something done about this. What is it? And what about it? What about it? I'm a taxpaying citizen, and I've been rooked, tooken, fleeced, jipped, to say the least. Look at that blinking thing. Does that look like it's worth a good fur coat to you? Well, I wouldn't know. What does that have to do with a fur coat? Plenty. That good-for-nothing, sticky-fingered old man of mine hocked my fur coat to buy this. Now, look, I'm very busy. If you'll just take this to the pawn shop, wherever B.O. got it, I'm sure they'll give you your money. That's just it. I took it back to the joint's clothes. I know that cash is king from way back. He took my fur coat and jumped down, that's what. I hardly think so. Now, you take it back again. He probably just stepped out for a cup of coffee. Meanwhile, it... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me take another look at that. What's the matter? Yeah, what's up, Tracy? Sam, get Dr. Brush over to the lab right away. I think we stumbled onto something. Hey, where are you going with that? I want my coat. Later, Gertie. Later. Later? What do I do if winter comes? Go south. I got something. Let me go, Ding Busted. You ain't got no clothes to do this to me. Quiet, Rube. Hey, our fingers, time up. Reach if the professor's come back yet. Where did Dick Blasey hear about this? He ain't gonna hear about it. And I got a little advice for you, Squirt. You better open up and spill where you just that painting, or the professor ain't gonna like you. I ain't got it, and I don't know no professors. Don't worry, you will. Was I right, Dr. Brush? Absolutely right, Mr. Tracy. Oh, it was most fortunate you familiarized yourself with the work of Professor Pallet, or you'd probably never have recognized it. There it is. The magnificent ghouls at play by Hans von Goff. Holy cats. Nothing's worth a half a million bucks. Much more to some people. What do you think of it? I like it better the other way. I want to thank you, Dr. Brush. You've been a great help. Would it be superfluous to say the pleasure was all mine? Well, what's our first move, Tracy? Put the pinch on Pallet? Not yet, Sam. How come? He's the guy we want, isn't he? Well, yes, he has to be. But first, we have to find out if he's the one who pawned the painting. We can't arrest him without evidence. Well, what do we do? Well, well, we'll check with the proprietor of the pawn shop. Let's go. Oh, Dr. Brush, could we drop you off anywhere? No, thanks. I have my car downstairs. Oh, good. Thank you again. It's locked. Maybe Gertie was right. Maybe the guy did blow town. It's possible, but I doubt it. Well, I was afraid of this. Pilot beat us to it. I guess we'll have to force our way in. Well, 
Looks like somebody got here ahead of us. Yeah. Keep your eyes open. Hey, Tracy! Find something? Yeah, down there. That's right. What happened? Three torpedoes wrecked the place. I don't get it. I figure it's a heist, but they don't even touch the cash. I know. They were looking for a painting. Yeah? How come you know? That's my job. These men, do you think you'd recognize them again if you saw them? Sure I would. There was three of them. One's a big moose with hands like bananas. The other's a little runt, looks like a weasel. The third one, what did he look like? He's a blubbery, fancy-talking bloke with a monocle. He's wearing one of them French beanies, you know, like you see in the French movies. That's Professor Pollock, there's no doubt about it. Did you tell him you sold the painting to B.O. Plenty? How come you know about B.O.? Never mind that, did you tell him? Sure, I told him. You think I want to get bumped off? These guys are playing for keeps. Well, you haven't got much time, Sam. You get over to B.O.'s place as fast as you can. Maybe you can head him off. I'll go to Pallets. You stand by here. I want to talk to you later. Yes? Professor Pallet? That's right. Uh, uh, who? Uh, I'm Dick Tracy. The police? Uh, of what? Uh, what? May I come in? Uh, yes, of course. May I ask the reason for this uh, honor? I understand you're something of an art collector, Professor. Oh, I have a certain connoisseur standing, but... Uh, I also understand you're an authority on painting, uh, particularly the works of Hans van Gogh. Well, I'm afraid you've been grossly misinformed, Mr. Tracy. As you can see, I hang only my own creations. You might call it a vanity of mine. As for Hans van Gogh... Do you mind if I look them over a bit? Of course not. Uh, but I think if, uh, if you looked at them from a slight distance... No, thanks. I get a better perspective close hand. Oh, very unusual technique, Professor. I notice you use a very heavy brush. Uh, yes, I, uh, I employ the Van Gogh method. Very concentrated pigmentation. Comes off very easily, doesn't it? As a matter of fact, I think you've been working on the surface of another painting. I wonder if the possibility could... Tracy. It's easy to catch him. Yes, Sam. Did you find B.O.? Not a sign of him. The joint's a wreck. From the looks of it, he's been kidnapped. Tracy, can you hear me? Come in, Tracy. Tracy, come in. Sam, get over here to Palace Studio as fast as you can. Hurry. What's up? What's you shooting? Tracy. Get him out of here. We ain't got time to take him along. I said get him out of here. He's the only one who knows where that painting is. So what? So we've lost everything else. So that painting we've got to sell for getaway money. Help! Mr. Bailey! Help! There we are. Professor. All right, Tracy. It's me. I got him. Good work, Sam. There's the one you winged. Yeah, well, the creep got away. We'll pick him up later. Okay, lock him up. Come on, let's go. You know, B.O., you're going to be able to buy gravel dirty a dozen fur coats with the reward you're going to get. What reward? Well, for helping us recover a dozen stolen paintings worth a fortune up in the millions. Millions? Oh, you're off your rocker, Mr. Bracey. <laughs> Somebody's kidding you. That picture I bought from Cassius King only cost $22.75. Okay, okay, B.O., have it your way. Anyhow, you're a hero. A hero? Wait till Gertie hears this. A hero. Well, now, if I ain't the one. <laughs>
name, it's Superman! a streak of lightning, more powerful than the pounding surf, mightier than a roaring hurricane. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. Stupid. It's about time you showed up. Come on, come on, hand it over. Okay, boss. Here it is. This is a swell racket, boss. And the Superman outfit, it works like a charm. <laughs> was only a fin. Next time, it'll be a Mickey fin. Grim turns foe. Well, that's ridiculous. It couldn't be Superman. What do you make of it, Clark? Hey, you two. The editor wants you to cover the opera tonight. And don't forget, it's formal. Good. Now I can wear my new evening gown. Doubles in for some trouble. Well, did 
Did you enjoy the opera? What's the matter, stupid? Did you lose your tongue? Don't stand there like a dummy. Give me the jewels. Are you trying to double-cross me? Why, you... Hey, boss, that's Mr. Superman. Well, I uh, didn't expect to see you here. <laughs> again that was quick i don't know if the spider's going to get out of this one but tune in next week and we'll find out once again pulp magazines were very popular back then they are actually the grandparents of our modern day comic books um you'll find many stories like the avenger and we also have one of the most popular ones was doc savage all these were reprinted from the 1960s on you'll find them in paperbacks and even today they're be it republished. So if you enjoy the spider's web, look under Amazon or your nearest bookstore and see if they have any pulp reprints. But thanks again. We'll be back. Mm -hmm.